Greetings everyone, as you know, Stable Diffusion 3.5 has been released. So I have prepared this amazing tutorial for you with a lot of information. I have compared all the schedulers and samplers for Stable Diffusion 3.5 large model. Everything you see on this tutorial is publicly shared, nothing paywalled. So this is totally open access tutorial. Not only that, I have compared Flux Dev versus Stable Diffusion 3. Point large comprehensively shaded grids, analyzed them, so you will see which one is performing better. Moreover, I have compared the FP8 versus FP16 version of the Stable Diffusion 3.5 large and you will not believe the results. The grids and everything is shaded. Furthermore, there is a newer version of T5XXL text encoder. I have compared it with the FP16 version and you will like it. Moreover, there is a newer Flux FP8 version. It's a scaled version by the ConfUI org and it is really really good so you will see the results of it as well and that is not all i will show you how to use stable diffusion 3.5 and flux with the very best configuration on the swarm ui the swarm ui is the most advanced and optimized ui to use the flux and stable diffusion 3.5 model i will show how to install on the windows and also on RAM port and message compute everything will be shown the all configurations and installation will be shown so this is the very best tutorial that you are going to find regarding the stable diffusion 3.5 and the flux models so as usual i have prepared an amazing article that contains all the links and the instructions this is an open access article open source article you don't need to have an account or register to see this article you can view this article even in the private window let me demonstrate you as a new incognito window you see the article is fully viewable and accessible so the link of this article will be in the description of the video I will begin with installing the Swarm UI on my Windows computer, show how to download and use the Stable Diffusion 3.5 large version and Flux Dev version with the newest developments and the best configuration. Then I will do the comparisons and evaluations that I have introduced in the beginning of the video. Then I will show on the RAM port and Masset Compute. So go to the very bottom of the post where you will see the attachments. On Windows 10, you need to have installed .NET 8 SDK as instructed by the Swarm UI. On 11, it is fully automatic. So if you get any error, install the .NET 8 SDK file from here. So in the attachments, download the Swarm UI Windows installer.bat file. Move into the disk where you want to install. I am going to install into my G drive. Make a folder like Swarm UI. Do not use any space character or anything. Double click and start. Do not run as administrator because it makes difference. Run anyway. Then the installation will automatically start. In this screen, click agree. I will use customize settings. I will select the modern dark. Next. Just yourself on this PC. Next. Conf UI local. Next. I'm not going to install anything and i am sure install now i will also show how to update your existing installation to use with stable diffusion 3.5 and the latest flux dev model then follow your cmd window to see if there are any errors or not and the swarm ui has been installed successfully on the cmd window i only have this error which i can ignore because i am not writing api code so now how we are going to download the latest very best models i have prepared a repository that you can manually download the link is here when you go to this link you will get to access all these different models that you can download into the accurate folders as written here which i'm going to show however i recommend you to use this automatic downloader file that i have prepared it is working amazing so click here to go to there and click here to download it then paste it into the folder where your Swarm UI has been installed like this. Extract there with extract all like this. And move the files into the same folder like this. So your Swarm UI folder and these files will be in the same 
folder then double click windows download models.bat file more info run anyway now this screen is important if you don't have more than 24 gigabytes of vram i recommend you to use fp8 version of the flux dev and now we have scaled version which i will show you the comparison and it is working better than the fp8 raw version this scaled version is very close to the fp16 version so i'm going to download option 2 then i'm going to download fp8 scaled version of the stable diffusion 3.5 large which works better than the fp16 version this is amazing you will be shocked by it so option 4 then i am going to use fp8 t5 scaled version is almost same quality and it will help me to save vram further which is option 6 then we also have best stable diffusion stxl and 1.5 models you can see the entire list here however i'm not going to download them right now and that's it then hit enter and it will automatically download everything however do not put a space character as i did so it is two four six and hit enter like this and yes it started downloading with the maximum possible speed this script is fully optimized to download with the best possible speed it is also robust and it has resume capability as well so you can restart the download and continue from wherever you have left so model downloads on my computer has been completed all the files has been downloaded now it is time to start using stable diffusion 3.5 and the flux latest version so how we gonna use it enter inside the swarm ui folder if you have already started swarm ui just close it if you also have a previous installation of the swarm ui i recommend you to use update windows.bat file and make sure that update has no errors otherwise it will not work if there are errors you can do a fresh installation then click launch windows.bat file and it will start the swarm ui latest version after you have done all of this wait until backends are loading from the server i will begin with showing the best configuration for the stable diffusion 3.5 large version now you may be wondering how did i come up with the best configuration first of all i have compared all the samplers and schedulers you can see all of them by clicking this zip file download it onto your computer and extract when you extract it you will see all the grids that i have shared i have done testing 62 different prompts let me show you one of them so it is like this it shows all the samplers and the schedulers comparison i have compared everything and decided which one is best so the best configurations are as like this first of all let's go to the models and select our stable diffusion 3.5 model this one scaled version i prefer four d steps and cfg scale 7 but you can also use different cfg scales and then display advanced options from here in the sampling go to the sampler and select dpm 2s ancestral this is working best and scheduler will be sgm uniform so it is like this you could also have noticed that this sampler is very slow even though this is the best sampler for stable diffusion 3.5 it is 2x slow compared to ailer plus beta so if you don't want to sacrifice speed you can also use the ailer plus beta this is the second best sampler configuration that i have found its speed is two times faster than the using dpm plus plus 2s ancestral so its speed is directly 2x faster it is up to your choice either use the very best sampler or use ailer plus beta this is the second very best sampler the choice is yours other than this you don't need to select anything this will work amazingly so let's try a prompt from the sweet ai like this and copy paste it stable diffusion 3.5 large also supports negative prompts but i'm not going to do anything then let's also open a nvi tab and see our vram usages it is using 3 gigabytes currently and generate to follow the progress go to the server logs and debug and follow what is happening here this model that we downloaded includes the clip models t5 model so it won't download anything else and this is the vram usage by the way if your gpu has a lower vram it will do all the optimizations so it should work as low as 6 gigabyte gpus as well to improve the speed on rtx 4000 series 
you can edit here and add dash dash fast and save it should make the rtx 4000 series faster so let's go back to generate and the image is getting generated right now and the image has been generated this is the image that we got it's a decent image this is how you use the stable diffusion 3.5 large version with the very best configuration currently so how you can also use loras it is so simple just find the st 3.5 loras from the sweet ai for example this is a lora download the lora file move it into your swarm your installation into models into the lora like this paste it there then go back to your installation go to the loras click refresh and in here select the lora you see you can decide the lora scale from here like this and let's use the prompt shaded here so this is a prompt okay let's copy this paste it there and the lora is selected with the scale one you can reduce the lora scale from here to reduce its impact then generate now it should use the both lora and the stable diffusion 3.5 large model at the same time let's see if there will be any speed reduction both the speed and the vram usage looks same as i said if you have lower vram having gpu it will use lower vram it will do all the optimizations but however since i have more vram it is using whatever is available to speed up the generation furthermore so don't worry about your vram it will work as low as 6 GB gpus okay the image has been completed let's look at it and yes it looks like working as expected now how are we gonna use the flux model with the latest configuration for the flux model let's go to the models and select the flux dev scale it from here for the flux which sampler is the best the best sampler is ip and dm this one and which scheduler is best the best scheduler is d dim uniform so these are the best sampler and best scheduler we are selecting the cfg scale as one do not forget that this is super important i still prefer for these steps and i prefer the flux guidance scale for now what else there are to select go to the advanced model add-ons and you can decide everything here so the clip latch is like this but since we have auto downloaded it it is ready and for the t5 i am going to use this one this is important if you don't select this it will download another one and use it so select this and in the advanced sampling you can make it automatic or you can make it like this as well if this was fp16 i would use fp16 but i will let it automatic since this is fp8 and let's use the same prompt and see the difference generate now we can watch the progress here it is going to load the model unfortunately you will see that it is downloading t5 xxl en conley model even though we didn't selected it this is a mandatory thing that it does so you can ignore this it is going to use the selected t5 xxl model i have reported this but this is how it is supposed to be so the flux model loaded and it is way faster than the stable diffusion 3.5 as you are seeing right now surprisingly and let's look at the memory usage it is almost same and the quality difference we will see that in a moment and the image has been generated so this is the flux fp8 scaled development model and this is the stable diffusion 3.5 with the lora without lora i don't expect to get better image let's also try same prompt as this one to see the prompt was here so i will copy back again and i will just paste it and generate another image by the way pay attention that i didn't select the lora of the stable diffusion 3.5 so if you select incompatible loras with the flux it wouldn't work every model has their unique loras like stable diffusion xl has stable diffusion xl loras stable diffusion 1.5 has stable diffusion 1.5 loras so every architecture requires a specific type of lora they are not compatible with each other and this is the flux dev model i think they are both good not too bad so now it is time to do the comparisons the grids are posted under the test results in the article shaded they are fully public you can download the fp8 comparisons of the t5xxl and you can download the fp8 comparison of the diffusion large actually 
There is a very little difference between FP8 and FP16 T5 XX. I'm going to pass it, but let me show you some comparisons of the FP8 and FP16 of Stable Diffusion Large 3.5. So open this link and click download. Open the downloaded grid file. It's a very big file as you are seeing right now. And when I analyzed it truly, I found that the FP8 version, the scaled FP8 version is following prompts better. For example, in this prompt, there is a photorealistic image of a man riding an enormous and terrifying Tynosaurus Rex in the prompt. So we expect a man to ride a Tynosaurus Rex. However, on the FP16 version, the man is here. But when I look at the FP8 version, a man is riding the Tynosaurus Rex. Yes, of course, it is not a great quality. This is Stable Diffusion 3.5, but FP8 is following the prompt better. Or in this prompt, I am expecting backdrop is a rich, deep black. However, in the FP16 version, it is not black, but in the FP8 version, it is black, the background. And in another prompt, yet again, FP8 follows the prompt better. So look at this file. I believe FP8 version is better than the FP16 version somehow. But yeah. And the biggest comparison is the Flux versus Stable Diffusion 3.5. Let's open this link here and download it. This is a huge file. It is really huge. You will see it. So open it with a proper image editor and music paid.net is a free open source editor on the left the images are flux dev and on the right the images are stable diffusion 3.5 large they are both compared in the 16-bit precision with the best t5 xxl the flux is not very good with the dragons but still it is way better looking than the stable diffusion 3.5 you see like this to like this and flux is not again very good with the dinosaurs this is dinosaur image and this is another image you see this man is supposed to be riding this the dinosaur is great but it is not prompt following and now photo of a man you see this is flux dev model and this is the stable diffusion 3.5 model the flux dev is way better here another photo again the flux dev is way better here another photo Again, the flux dev is many times better as you are seeing right now. Here another photo. In this photo, they are close. However, I think flux dev is still better. Here another one. We see that again, the flux dev is way better. Here another photo. This is supposed to be the Witcher game engine 3D CGI render. And yes, the flux dev is amazing. And this is the stable diffusion 3.5. Look at this. And here another one. This is World of Warcraft game 3D CGI render. You see, this is amazing flux dev. This is stable diffusion 3.5. In this prompt, the stable diffusion 3.5 is performance not bad. Yes, there are so many anatomical errors like this one, the face, but it is not very bad. This is the flux dev. By the way, when you fine tune flux dev with yourself, it becomes way more realistic as I have shown in my recent tutorial videos. In this prompt, this is flux dev and this is the stable diffusion 3.5, not bad. And in this prompt, stable diffusion 3.5, not bad either. This is flux dev. Perhaps the stable diffusion 3.5 is better. This is another prompt. Again, the flux dev is way more accurate, but this is also not very bad. And here, this one, let's look at this one. A man body armor glowing with energy sci-fi. You see, this is way better looking than this one. Or here, this one. Again, the flux dev is many times better than the stable diffusion 3.5. Again, the flux dev way better. Here in this one, a man poster design for a theater production, dramatic eye catching. The flux dev way better. Again, in this one, you see, this is stable diffusion 3.5. I mean, this is so bad. This is so bad compared to the flux dev. Or here, this one, in this image, I think they are both close, but still flux dev is way better. In this one, I mean, look at this. This is the prompt. Just pause the video and read it. This is the image of flux dev and this is the image of the stable diffusion 3.5 or in this prompt. By the way, this image becomes way, way more realistic when you do fine tuning. Let me demonstrate you. So these images are from my recent flux fine tuning tutorial. You can watch it. Let me show you a few of them. You see the how much more it became realistic with fine tuning as you are seeing right now. This is myself trained. 
this is amazing quality and this is that image how much more realistic it became with doing fine tuning as you are seeing right now compare it to the raw model this is raw model output and this is after i have done fine tuning the model with my own images and this is stable diffusion 3.5 this is a really good image for stable diffusion 3.5 but it is not following the prompt the prompt has a man is riding a majestic black panther however there is no man in this image and in this case again the flux dev is way better compared to the stable diffusion 3.5 again the flux dev way better i mean look at this image this is a very low quality image in this one the flux dev is again way better so you can download this grid and look at yourself however flux dev is many times better than the stable diffusion 3.5 except this image very close but i can tell you that flux dev is way way better however i will still do fine tuning and lora training research on stable diffusion 3.5 because I believe the community will make amazing fine-tuned models of the Stable Diffusion 3.5 like the Realistic Vision, like the Juggernaut XL. So hopefully we will see that. But for now, Stable Diffusion 3.5 is way, way worse than the Flux Dev. If you ask my opinion, I mean, it is very rare that they are getting the same quality. However, the prompt following the quality of the stable diffusion 3.5 is way way worse than the flux i say that is as a, i say this as an unfortunate thing however this is the reality the flux dev is way better now i will show you how to use stable diffusion 3.5 large model and the swarm ui on the massive compute with the newest model and the configurations so in the post you will see that there is massive compute instructions go to that section with scrolling down there is registration link please use that i appreciate it it is here after registering and logging in set up your billing account then go to the deploy we have a very special image here to use you can use any gpu but i recommend rtx a6000 gpu select one you can also rent multiple gpus and speed up your generations with using the multi back end of the swarm ui actually let's use at least two like this and select creator image as se courses and apply our coupon to reduce the price to half you see the price is 1.25 dollars for two gpus when i verify it will become half price so it is 31 cents per hour for single rtx a6000 gpu then deploy then it will show you new instance successfully created and just wait for initialization to be completed meanwhile if you haven't installed thin link client yet click this link here and in here download version according to your computer i will use windows then start it with clicking on it click yes click next accept next install just it is next and install then finish so in here what you need to do is click options go to the local devices uncheck all click details for drives and we are going to add a synchronization folder this is a folder that you generate on your computer yourself click add then click this three dots icon generate a folder wherever you want for synchronization between master compute and your computer in here select your synchronization folder click ok make it read and write click ok okay and you are ready just wait for initialization to be completed okay so our machine has started you see status is running all we need to do is copy this ip address to here copy the username ubuntu to here and copy our password to here and connect then click continue since this is 2x gpu machine it has 512 gb storage and 96 gb of ram and then click start use starting till link session then we are on the remote machine now we have amazing features here it is so easy to use we also have download models so you can either use this or you can open this link in your message compute let me show you like here copy paste download the models into the accurate folders or you can use the prepared super fast downloader which is inside this post which i recommend let's go there click here to download the downloader zip file move it into your synchronization folder which is mass compute in my case 
then go to the file here go to the thin drives go to mass compute this will be the folder name that you made as your synchronization folder then move the file into the any folder that you wish like downloads folder then right click and extract here enter inside the folder open method compute download instructions copy this part this is the installation part then open a new terminal paste and hit enter now the recommended models for this machine this is a 48 gigabytes machine download fp16 flux dev download fp8 scaled stable diffusion 3.5 because it is working better you may be wondering why i have shown this in the windows tutorial part and also grids are available on the post on the article so you can also look there and i recommend using the fp16 t5 with option 5 so these are the options that i recommend for the massive compute then hit enter it is going to start downloads with the ultra fast speed as you are seeing right now let me demonstrate you so these are the download speeds it is just mind-blowingly fast on the message compute you will see that so the models have been downloaded now i will show you how to use them on message compute very easily first of all we have update swarm ui button here so these buttons are for updating please run this icon after you double click it it will update the swarm ui and start its latest version this is super important to update the swarm ui whenever you start it so you will get the very best very latest version like this and it is it it is done the swarm ui has been installed and updated to latest version so you can use this inside till link client but i don't recommend it it is slow how you can use it just close this and you will see that we have a button here run cloud player stable swarm ui double click it this will start the swarm ui locally and also on the cloud accessible link you see this is the link right click and open the link then copy this link and open it in your computer so you see this is running on the massive compute however i can use it on my computer right now since this is multiple gpu i am also going to add a backend you can do this on your local computer as well if you have multiple gpus it is so easy copy this and here click this conf ui self starting click ok copy paste this moreover if you are using 4000 series gpus add here dash dash fast and set the gpu id 1 and save so this one will run on the gpu id 0 and this one will run on the gpu id 1 we can see that we have two gpus in the server info tab so the usage is exactly same as on the windows tutorial part please follow that part all you need to do is select the models set the configuration and generate and if you want to use loras on the massive compute how are you gonna use it for example let's use this stable diffusion 3.5 lora copy its link open it inside the massive compute like this but the link was not copied i will copy again and open again because sometimes it happens still fail it right click copy and paste okay it doesn't work sometimes it doesn't work i will report this error one more time so i manually open the link here click download this is a model that you need to log in log in and download it after you have downloaded it right click and move to and go to ubuntu apps stable swarm ui by the way this is latest swarm ui this is where swarm ui installed on massive compute models and inside lora so this is where you are supposed to put the lora models or the other models inside this folder so select it and that's it then when i return to the public link here i click loras and refresh and it is here now i can use it so i select the stable diffusion 3.5 set the settings as i have shown in the windows and use it so now i will show how to install swarm ui on ram pod and use the stable diffusion 3.5 large and flux nevis models scroll down in the post and go to the ram pod instructions then please use this link to register i appreciate that after registering and logged in into your account set up your Blink set some credits then go to the my post go to the deploy so you can also use permanent network storage system i have a full tutorial for it here however i'm not going to use it this is the permanent network storage so go to the pods click deploy and 
I prefer to use secure cloud because it is way faster compared to community cloud recently. From here I prefer Texas 3 but you can use anything. And I am going to use RTX 4090 for speed but you can use preferably L4DS as well. It is up to you. If you use L4DS it will be even faster with the 16 bit but it is not mandatory. Click change template, select type torch here and search for Rampot PyTorch 2.1. This is working best. Click edit template and set a volume disk as you need as much as the models that you are going to use. Let's set it as 150 GB and add 7801 port here. This is important to access the Swarm UI interface. Set overrides, click deploy on demand. Go to my pods, just wait until connect button appears. You can also run different pods and get the best speed one having pod. Then click connect button, connect to Jupyter Lab. In the run pod instructions you see there is install linux.sh file, click it. Then use this icon to upload it into your workspace. Make sure that it is named accurately like this if you have the previous files. So install dash linux.sh file. Then we are going to copy the command here to install. Open a new terminal. Copy paste the command like this. It will start installation of the Swarm UI. Once you see it started on the local URL like this, go to my ports and connect to the 7801 port like this. Then click agree. Customize settings, modern dark, next, just yourself on this PC, conf UI local. I am not going to download anything, but you can select next and yes, I am sure install now. Then follow the CMD window progress here. It is very fast to install. So the installation of the Swarm UI has been completed. It is loaded on the RAM port. You see we are connected from the RAM port proxy. How you are going to download models on here to use them? You need to enter inside the accurate folders like models like stable diffusion. Then in the public post there is a repository link here. Click this link and you need to download these files with wget. They are all public you can use. However, I recommend to use our ultra fast and robust automatic models downloader. So click this post, download this Swarmui model downloader zip file. Then go back to your workspace, click this upload files, select the zip file, right click and extract archive. Then you will have all the files like this. Open the rampot download instructions txt file and select this like this and open a new terminal and copy paste it. This will ask you options. Okay, since this is a 24 GB having port with RTX 4090, I am going to use FP8 versions. Normally, I would recommend you to download the FP8 Flux Dev Scaled version. However, currently it is not working with the RTX 4000 series. It works with 3000 series and RTX A6000 series. So I reported this issue and hopefully it will get fixed. When you are watching this tutorial, therefore I recommend you to do this. Download option 2, option 4, option 6 and option 8. Why? Because if you get error with option 2, then you can use the option 8. Since I have already downloaded them on this port, you see they are all completed in a moment because it checked the files and verified they were downloaded previously. How we are going to use it? Go to the models and refresh. We are in the Rampot proxy and they will appear like this. The usage is exactly the same as I have shown in the Windows tutorial part. So please watch that part. Do not skip it. And what if, if you want to use the LoRa's on the Rampot? To use the LoRa's on Rampot, I have an excellent tutorial here which also explains how you can download the gated models on Rampot. So watch this tutorial to learn it fully. As a demonstration, I am going to use this LoRa with Stable Diffusion 3.5 model. The logic is same whether it is Flux, it is STXL, it is Stable Diffusion 1.5 or Stable Diffusion 3.5. The logic is totally same. I am going to download this to my computer. This is a relatively small LoRa, so I can use this interface to upload. Otherwise, I would be using the Rampot CTL or the Jupyter Notebook as explained in this tutorial video. So click this icon and select the model. In the bottom you will see that it is uploading from here. You see? 
it is uploading into the LoRa folder. This is where you put the LoRa files and in the bottom it read it complete and it is now completed. We can see last modified here. So how we gonna use it? I click LoRa's and refresh and it is here. Now I can use it. So I select the stable diffusion 3.5 set settings as I have shown in the windows and use it. So I hope you have enjoyed. Please join our more than 8000 members discord channel it is at the top of the article when you click this link you will see that this is our discord channel we almost have 9000 members right now so join our server you can ask me any questions that you want we can chat there and check out all the other links we have stable diffusion generative ai github please fork it start it and watch it we are over 2000 stars we also have a subreddit here please also join our subreddit follow there i am sharing a lot of information here and you can follow me on my real linkedin account it is here hopefully see you in another amazing tutorial video